Good morning to our viewers here in the United States and good afternoon to our viewers in Europe. I'm Steve Sokol, the president of the American Council on Germany, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar. In mid-March, Intel announced a 17 billion euro investment to build two new chip factories in the city of Magdeburg. Intel's decision is part of a larger 33 billion euro initial investment in Europe to create what they call, quote, a next generation European chip ecosystem, end quote, and to help tackle the ongoing global shortage of semiconductors. Overall, this investment, along with others in France, Ireland, Italy, Poland, and Spain, is meant to address the need for a more secure and resilient supply chain when it comes to semiconductors. This new hub in Magdeburg, which Intel has named Silicon Junction, is projected to create 7,000 construction jobs over the course of the build, as well as 3,000 permanent high-tech jobs at Intel and tens of thousands of additional jobs for suppliers and other partners. For the city of Magdeburg, which competed against two other German cities, Intel's investment will be a boost to the economy for the approximate 235,000 residents that live there and for a city that has an unemployment rate of between eight and nine percent as compared with Germany's 5.5%. So to talk about this decision by Intel and what it means both for Intel and for Magdeburg, we are joined by Sandra Yvonne Stieger and by Greg Slater. Sandra is the Deputy Mayor for Economy, Tourism and Regional Cooperation for the City of Magdeburg. Herzlich willkommen, Sandra. Vielen herzlichen Dank. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you for having me and I hope for an um, exciting discussion with you. Well, thank you for joining us, and I am very much looking forward to the conversation as well. And Greg is the Vice President and Senior Director of Global Regulatory Affairs at Intel. Greg, a warm welcome to you as well. Good afternoon. I'm very glad to be here as well. So I'm, I'm excited about this conversation, um, particularly because earlier in my career, I worked on a number of economic development projects um, in Germany, but also sort of bringing German regions that were going through structural change together with American regions that were going through st structural change. And I actually had a chance to visit Magdeburg on, on some of those trips and during some of that work. So I was really excited about the opportunity to sort of get an update about what's going on in Magdeburg um, and also to hear sort of Intel's narrative about why it chose Magdeburg. But before we get into sort of the Magdeburg piece of this, um, I'd like to, to talk to you, Greg, a little bit about some of the reasons why Intel thought this was the right time to build a new factory in Europe in the first place, and what some of the drivers were for this huge investment. I think everybody's been aware of the, the shortage of, of chips um, as a result of the pandemic and now to a certain degree as a result of supply chain disruptions because of the war in Ukraine. Um, but I, I, I'd love to get your thoughts on that and really sort of a more detailed sense of, of why this was the time for a new factory in Europe. Sure, Steve. Um, basically, there, it's almost like a perfect storm. On the one hand, we needed a greenfield site in any event. We wanted to diversify. We wanted to help rebalance the global supply chain. We already have a presence in Europe, in Ireland. We've been there 30 plus years. And Europe is a very stable uh, location. Um, the increased desire to have greater transatlantic relationships also plays played a factor. The forthcoming EU CHIPS Act was a factor. Um, and we wanted to, we have a greenfield, a new greenfield site in Ohio in the US, and that's part of the diverse, diversification is to find another site that's not near the new one. And Europe um, was very attractive for those reasons. The rebalancing of the global supply chain, we already have a presence there. We have a number of suppliers that it, across Europe that can help us um, feed the fab, so to speak, support it. And so the, all those factors together, it wasn't one particular factor, but all of them working together suggested that Europe, it was the right time to increase our presence in Europe. 
because we already have one. And so sort of just to, to push you on that a little bit, why not go back to Ireland and, and just make greater investments there or expand the presence that you had there already, as opposed to coming onto the, onto the continent in this way? Well, to be honest, it's not that we didn't consider doing that, right? That was a natural, but from a risk management point of view, you put all your factories in one place um, is not always the best way to do it. Secondly, uh, Germany, now, now you're getting into why Germany, not why Europe, right? Why Germany it has a very strong ecosystem, right? Um, one of the largest economies in the world, great, one of the greatest exporters of goods, rich history of innovation, lots of technical talent, um, an ecosystem that we thought we could help build and contribute to and also benefit from. Um, which is a different different ecosystem than in Ireland, right? Even though Ireland does have a strong ecosystem. So um, Ireland was, was definitely in consideration, but because of those factors, um, Germany, Germany won out. So it sounds, I mean, it sounds as if um, it wasn't necessarily a given that you would end up in Magdeburg even after after you decided to focus on Germany. It, it seems as if there were a number of other cities that were um, under consideration from what I was able to find out, you know, one in Bavaria, one in Saxony. So also, you know, one in Western Germany, one in Eastern Germany. Um, but you ended up deciding um, on, on Magdeburg. What made Magdeburg the right location for Intel? So again, it's not one factor. It's a combination of factors. You start with, can you even operate in a city? We look at 10 countries and then we looked at a number of sites within dozens and dozens of sites within those 10 countries. And you get down to Germany and then you look at cities within Germany and then you look at where can we operate effectively? Can, can we get the right size land? We have you know a thousand acres, at, is that 500 hectares, something like that. And we have, you, an additional uh, and an option for additional land for suppliers. That's a that's a big big demand for a lot of places, and the land has to be level. It has to be vibration free. You know you can't have trains nearby, you can't or airports nearby. Lots of technical requirements that you have to jump through, um, and s- certainly Magdeburg wasn't the only one to qualify, but it qualified on all the technical parameters. Then in addition to the technical parameters, you look at the talent availability. You know, seven universities within a hundred kilometers of Magdeburg, you know, 20 up to almost 20,000 technical students in Magdeburg, the the broader talent pool regionally, 670,000 direct labor um, is available regionally. You have, um, you know, you, you look at that, the talent pool the availability, the skills, et cetera. And Magdeburg qualified there as well. And then you look at logistics. Okay, so Magdeburg is 90 kilometers from Leipzig, um, 120 from Berlin, 145 from Hanover, 140 some from Dresden. So it's, you know, pretty centrally located. Then you also look at the officials um, (laughs) and, their, their desires. Is there a win-win here, right? We have a lot of requirements. We're not a, necessarily the easiest company to get along with um, because of our requirements. Um, but we, we look for um, a, a real long-term partnership and how, um, whether the, the local officials are problem solvers, whether they want this industry, um, how badly do they want it? Do they understand what they're getting? all those factors. And um, Sandra and her team have, have been, are, and have been, and will be amazing. And that's a, that's a big factor. So I'm, I'm gonna bring Sandra into the conversation in just a second, but, but one, one more question to you, Greg, about this sort of decision-making process, because it sounds like, I mean, obviously there were multiple factors um, that went into the decision about the site location. Um, There were technical issues and then sort of softer issues, if you will. But it it seems as if um, there are a number of other 
places in Germany where there is already perhaps more of an infrastructure when it comes to chip production um, and chip companies. I mean, I'm thinking specifically about Saxony, but also, um, you know, I think places like Frankfurt Oder, um, there, there are other areas where there is already some activity that could have been a natural fit for you. Um, and yet you, you chose to go someplace a little bit different. Um, why not go someplace where there's already more engagement in the, in the chip process than there is in, in Magdeburg? Well, sometimes there's a downside to that. You're competing for talent. Um, you don't have the opportunity to build something from the ground up, which has its own value. Um, so it's a balance, you know, there's, there, there are pros and cons of going to more established places. And um, the balance in this case weighed, weighed against those places, mm -hmm. even though they're, they were attractive. And we also, um, another factor is not just how easy the officials are to work with, but um, how are they able to accommodate our schedule? And sometimes in an established place, you get, um, I'm not commenting on Germany, but mm -hmm. I've, I, we have fat facilities in various places around the world. You get a lackadaisical attitude. Officials are used to having us there. Um, it's harder to get a greenfield site going, believe it or not, um, because of that. So that's another factor. So Greg, thank you for, for sort of setting the stage. And, and Sandra, I'd like to, to turn to you. I mean, obviously having Intel come to, to Magdeburg is a big win for Magdeburg. And so I'd, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the process at your end um, and, and what measures you undertook to sort of court Intel and bring Intel to Magdeburg. First off, how did you even hear about Intel's desire to find a location in Europe and, and specifically in Germany for a new factor? And once you knew about it, um, what did the city do to try to engage Intel and, and make the case that Magdeburg was the right location? Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say we heard not about Intel. Um, if you have an idea, Intel is coming to Magdeburg you think maybe Intel is knocking on your door and says, hi, here's Intel. We maybe want to come to Magdeburg. That is not the case. And the first step, um, we got a call from the Germany Trade and Invest. And uh, they ask you, um, hey, we are searching for a big site in Germany. And uh, we need a lot of space. We have an investor for microelectronics. Um, they want to invest in Germany, maybe, and um, they will bring a lot of jobs. Do you have a site? That was on the 12th of April in the last year. We got that question and we answered, yes, we have. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's it. That's the first step. You have no idea which company this is, which investor. You have no idea about that. And then you have an, an, a question answer game. You get questions from the Germany Trade and Invest and you give them answers. And um, some, some weeks later, um, then Intel is directly knocking on your door and, say, um, and they say, yeah, we are the investor, and now we not only need answers, we need solutions for our topics. That was great, uh, Greg told you. It is um, important to start in that process directly to communicate, to have video conferences, to call, to directly write emails. And that was a time we thought, okay, that is a big chance for Magdeburg. That is a real big chance. And we really did our best. We discussed solutions. We made suggestions. We wanted that investor. That was a very, very big thing for us. And um, in that part of a city, I'm, I'm at the municipal administration at the city of Magdeburg, you know, um, you always can be as good as your product is. And we had a really good product. We had a green field. We have 
three th streets around a federal road, we have a country road, and we have an autobahn directly mm -hmm. on that site. Um, we have power, we have water, we have a lot of talent there in Magdeburg and around Magdeburg. And we have, I think, good people who, who showed Intel we want that project. And that is a process of a month and month. And step by step, you find solutions and you have an idea what Intel wants and you try to give them what they want. And um, so I think we get a feeling for each other. We got it. And um, you never know exactly how is the competition, who is the other location mm -hmm. in Germany or in Europe. We know or we knew there are a lot of other locations. And that was very important for us to know that there are other locations but we never knew who or where are the other locations and so it is a process and we showed that we want it and we found the right answers and we found especially solutions not only answers mm -hmm. i will tell so that's I mean, maybe it, uh, part of the story yeah, I mean, I mean, Sandra, it's really interesting to hear you talk because it sounds like it was a it sort of complicated back and forth first with with Germany trade and investment, um, and then with Intel itself, to try to get at the the details as more and more of the sort of technical qualifications for the site were checked off, right? It was then let's look at some of these these other elements that would make Magdeburg an, an interesting location. So Sandra, how how did sort of this process fit in with an overarching strategic plan for the city or economic development plan for the city? Um, had Magdeburg been thinking about moving into the semiconductor sector prior to this? Maybe not in the first. Before Intel came, we know... Um, we have in economic terms a lot to offer. Um, I wouldn't call them cluster, but we are a center of excellence in health tech, uh, industry 4.0, uh, IT and ICT, clean tech, new mobility. So there was, or there is an ecosystem. There is an ecosystem in Magdeburg. Semiconductors, no, that was not our first idea of that. But now when we know <laughs> Intel is coming, we obviously will build that, mm -hmm. of course. This is the chance to, to, to build a real ecosystem around these semiconductors. Uh, in other sites in, in Germany, Dresden, for example, they have such an ecosystem. But I think maybe there is a lot more Magdeburg in the Magdeburg ecosystem now or we want to develop it, and um, we know it is a chance. We have the first steps here. We have maybe smaller companies, uh, startups here, but that is a real chance. Also for Intel, they have a, a basis. Uh, these are basics for Magdeburg as well as for Intel. So um, I think there was a lot before. We never had the semiconductor idea before, but now we have. Definitely. So, so Greg, I mean, you, you talked a little bit about how, how great it was to work with Sandra and her team during this decision-making process and, and this, this back and forth. Um, can you talk a little bit more from an Intel viewpoint, um, what that back and forth was like? And, and maybe it would be interesting from both of you to hear about what some of the most difficult questions were that were asked and needed to be needed to be answered or, or challenges that needed to be solved? Um, sure. So, <clears throat> I mean, our technical requirements, you know, we have dozens and dozens of factors. And so it's an education process. You know, it's one thing to say, okay, this is the piece of land we need. This is the size we need. But then it goes into... What's the elevation like? What's the soil like? What can we do vibration studies? You know, are there 
certain things that we need to be aware of. It just goes on and on. And so it's an iterative process in terms of making sure that a location can work. One of the, um, you know, Sandra mentioned the logistical aspects of the site, you know, and how close it is to roads and all that. That's all highly relevant. Um, there are other issues like what's on the site, what needs to be cleared, you know, what's around the site. Are, are people going to want this industry, you know, and all those kind of factors. But I think maybe one of the toughest discussions is, is infrastructure because we're not just building one fab. The site has room for eight fabs mm -hmm. and that requires a fair amount of infrastructure and and the question always is, well, can, can the city support it? Mm -hmm. Can it, can it really support that much um, activity and those demands that are necessary to produce from eight different factories eventually over time? Well, and, and obviously, you know, because it's an iterative process too, this isn't something that happens overnight, right? I mean, it happens over, over time. And I think part of it is a question of, of having the capacity or bandwidth to imagine that sort of expansion over time. There's the initial investment, but then there's going to be a greater, a greater investment. Um, yes, correct. So, so Greg, I mean, one, one more question to you uh, related to that, you know, you were talking about some of the, the tests that need to be done, some of the studies that need to be conducted to make sure that the site itself um, will be vibration free, for example, that the soil samples are, are um, what they need to be for the kind of production that you're talking about. Um, who does those tests? Who conducts those studies? Is that something that Intel does or is that the responsibility of, of the city of Magdeburg, for example? No, no, we conduct them. We have, we have experts that do those kind of things. Just to give you an idea of the kind of manufacturing tolerances we deal with, I, I'm calling in from Arizona, which is currently our largest manufacturing site. We had a small earthquake in Los Angeles that the vibrations of which could be felt, you know, um, 350 miles away in Arizona. The reason it did not upset the product, the manufacturer of these products is you're making, you know, you're putting a billion transistors on the size of, of a fingernail. Right, it's tiny, tiny little manufacturing processes that are, can be upset with a lot of different things, um, including human uh, germs and all that. That's why we wear bunny suits in the fab. Well, the reason those vibrations did not upset the, the product is because we took that into account when we built the fab. We built it so that it could withstand some vibration, but, but we try to avoid the vibration because it's a pain, right? So um, to answer your question, these studies are very particular and we, we carry them out to make sure that we can operate there. Sandra, what was the most challenging question that you got from, from Intel or, or most difficult sort of issue concern that you needed to address in, in sort of making the case to Intel to come to you? Many, many people <laughs> ask that question. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you. We, we made it step by step and every question was a question we had to think over every step. And every was a new house model. What is challenge. a challenge? Yeah, a new every, challenge. every step, every question was a new challenge for us. And there was not more or less easy or difficult question between. Every question was difficult for us to find the perfect solution. We wanted to give the best solution or the best answer we can. There were easy questions. Is there a risk for earthquakes? No, definitely. We have not a map for earthquakes in Magdeburg because th there is no risk. Um, is there a flood risk? No, we have a we have a flood map and we can show we are on a hill. You know, our site is called uh, Owl Hill. Um, it's high enough. There is no flood risk, for example. And that was easy, but um, there were a lot of 
technical questions yet we had to think over and and to discuss and to to ask people experts but there was not that one question was what was very very hard or difficult everyone was a part of a big puzzle and every question was very important for us so um the whole process was difficult but from that point of view today it was not easy but it was a very exciting process to to have the experience i'm i'm sure such kind of of searching process for an investor like intel i will have that once a lifetime mm-hmm. and that was the whole time it was so exciting when i became aware that it is intel i was so oh my god it's intel that's mm-hmm. super exciting for us and we gave everything so everything was hard but as well as easy so in in a sense you know you've you've made it through the first hurdle right to to bring intel but now there's still a lot of work ahead and sandra you were talking about you know building a semiconductor ecosystem um greg spoke a little bit earlier about um the potential expansion over time right that it's it's more than just this one facility but that there needs to be the potential for growth to to broader um facilities and so what is magdeburg doing right now to sort of prepare for intel's arrival i mean i think this means a lot for city services like public transportation um but other infrastructure needs that will will be necessary for such a big project in the region um what what measures are you taking right now not on site to facilitate the development of the site itself it's to greg or to me to you to you to sandra me. okay no. um it's um we have to do a lot so the whole process we develop plans a lot of plans the whole process the last year plans we have to plan we have to develop plans a lot of them and now we have to fulfill and um and it, it is more work to do we know what we have to do but it is we have the chance now to have more people to do this work because um you know the whole process it was very important that it stays as long as it is possible a secret you know no one should know we had a very small team um and and we tried with a few such a few people to develop all these plans now we have to bring it to life and but we have a bigger team for example supply chain ecosystem the ecosystem to build we now have three people they are looking what is here in magdeburg still we have a study how looks the whole ecosystem now and to find a vision what the ecosystem has to look in 5 or 10 years so they have a way and then we just have to go that way mm-hmm. that is one part then we have the talent topic talent topic is very important we have universities in magdeburg and now we have to talk to them we have to talk to them to to ask and to find solutions to find a way to to bring the best people to intel and the whole ecosystem to magdeburg that is a very a very important um topic for us and then the whole construction the whole construction to to build together with intel that fab it's also a challenge and we have questions for permitting and the soil greg told you and a lot of things streets for example we have to build together with intel and to give them the solution how we can make it as fast as possible mm-hmm. and time is a very very important topic for everything right so one one last question to you now um on this sandra which is what was the the public response like when it when it became public knowledge that intel was coming um how how is the city promoting this within 
the region? And were people happy about it? Were people concerned about it? Definitely happy. You know, Magdeburg has a very long industrial history. And um, when the Iron Curtain fell in, in 1989, the whole industry um, break down. Uh, it was terrible. Many, many people lost their jobs. And we are an industrial city. We have oil in, in our bodies, you know, uh, mm -hmm. what I like to try to, to tell you. And when they heard Intel is coming, production is coming back to Magdeburg, they were absolutely happy. If you if you are going out to the streets in Magdeburg and asking, how do you feel about Intel? They say applause. Thank you. It's so great that they are coming. It's it's an opportunity for this city, is an opportunity for our children, is an opportunity for everyone here. And uh most of the people are really, really happy. Of course, there are the, some question, sustainability, for example, we have to discuss to, together with Intel. But I think the whole idea, production and Intel, it's future technology coming to Magdeburg. It was a firework everyone was smiling about. Mm -hmm. well, and by the way, one, if I may, Steve, um, one of the reasons, you know, you asked about Magdeburg and I, I did not mention this, but its industrial background obviously mm -hmm. was a key reason um, for coming to Magdeburg, right? There, the machinery, the history of machinery, manufacturing and all that, that's all highly relevant. Sure. So, so Greg, I mean, thank you for that, because I think that, you know, that that history does matter, right? And and building on a strong foundation is important, um, particularly for communities that are undergoing structural change. It's it's a major factor. Um, but but Greg, I'd like to maybe switch gears a little bit. Um, you know, this is undoubtedly part of a of a larger effort that we're seeing um, of more onshoring and friendshoring because of some of the supply chain chain shortages that we've seen in in recent years. <laughs> How much um, of an impact did the pandemic have on, on this decision by Intel to come to Europe, to come to Germany? Um, and to what degree was this something that you were thinking about already in 2019 or very early 2020 before we felt you know, the, the implications um, of, the, of the pandemic? So good question. Um, the pandemic wasn't a major factor. Um, by the time you know, so our forecast now is that the supply, the shortages is, are not going to be alleviated until 2024. But building a fab takes three to four years, building, it, equipping it and getting it going and ramping it up in production. So by, you know, by the time these fabs are built, the pandemic hopefully will be over, right? Mm -hmm. And the shortage will be, could be alleviated, to, but there will be other shortages, um, I think the pandemic, what the pandemic did is highlight the supply chain constraints that can lead to any number of problems. And certainly building advanced leading edge fabs in Germany can create some supply chain security um, for Europe. Um, and that's what we're aiming. This is a long-term play. It's not a pandemic play. Mm -hmm. And also, these fabs will be at the leading edge. They're not going to um, manufacture product uh, routine, um, off, uh, the more plain mature node products that are used in some of the industries. Ireland does some of that. Germany is not going to be doing that, mm -hmm. right? They're gonna be at the advanced edge, which is really important to understand because some people don't in, in Europe don't really appreciate the fact that there will be higher and higher demand for leading edge semiconductors. And in fact, there's a Kearney report that suggests that the CAGR for leading edge semiconductors is 15% mm -hmm. until 2030, at least 2030. And that's because of AI, artificial intelligence applications, telecommunications, autonomous driving, those kind of emerging technologies that are really important in developing Europe and in, in, in the digitization efforts of the commission 
and, um, and uh, helping the economy grow and modernize and benefit from technology. That's all, a lot of that is done at the leading edge. Mm -hmm. So related to sort of this long-term process, um, one of our, our viewers in New York has actually submitted a question um, in, and it reads as follows. How, how realistic do you think the European Union's goal of doubling the EU's share of global chip production from about 9% to 20% by 2030 actually is, given the timeline that you were just talking about. And um, she goes on to, to write, can Europe, given the war in Ukraine and supply bottlenecks, effectively compete with Asian semiconductor powerhouses? So on the first question, it depends on how you interpret that goal. Is it 20% of all semiconductors or advanced uh, leading edge semiconductors? And it, the statements in Europe have differed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of them seem to suggest it's no, that it was aimed at leading edge semiconductor production. Um, in that case, the goal is definitely achievable because even the fabs in Germany will go a long ways towards that goal. The broader goal is much more ambitious and will be, will be a tough, uh, tough road to hope. Mm -hmm. um, because even as production increases in Europe through, you know, the EU CHIPS Act is a great piece of policy and legislation and um, focusing on first of a kind facilities. It's really well done actually. And it will help a lot. It will help level the playing field, allowing sup public support for manufacturing that is first of a kind. And so, but that will help towards the goal if you interpret the goal as leading edge, not necessarily the broader goal. Mm -hmm. um, this, it also helped level the playing field and help us compete with the Asian manufacturers. Without that support, it's really hard. Um, mm -hmm. And most places in Europe are a lot more expensive than those in Asia, which is why so much of the US and European semiconductor manufacturing industry has migrated to Asia. So in, in, with regard to that, and this is something that, that you touched on a little bit earlier in our, in our conversation, um, there are these two CHIPS Acts, if you will. One is the, the EU's CHIPS Act and the other is the US CHIPS Act. Um, how, how do they compare with each other and, and where do you see them working in, in tandem? Um, because obviously this is a common challenge facing Europe and the US. And, and as you just said, um, I think there's greater awareness um, on both sides of the Atlantic that we need to work more collaboratively to try to address the short the shortages, but also to try to address um, supply chain challenges and create more resilient supply chains, particularly when it comes to, to chips. Um, so both both countries, both regions have suffered dramatic declines in semiconductor manufacturing. Um, you know, the U.S. from 37% in 1990 down to 12, Europe 44% down to eight, very similar problems because of Asian industrial policy in East Asia. Um, and the solutions, at, at superficially, the two acts look pretty similar, but there are pretty, some, some notable differences. Europe focuses, again, on first-of-a-kind facilities. The U.S. not so much um, has a bunch of criteria, so it's 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 in some ways it's broader, um, and the U.S. Ha is more definitive on its funding. It's 52 billion if it gets across the finish line at the federal level. The the EU is a is is close to that, but it's really repurposing existing funds. Um, it's not really clear where all the funding will come from, except a lot of it will be at member state. Um, level. The common where they can actually cooperate is in the R&D space. Mm -hmm. um, on pre-competitive research, the, the U.S. CHIPS Act sets up what's called the National Semiconductor Technology Center um, mm -hmm. to try and bridge the gap from lab to fab, coordinate these R&D projects across the U.S., um, and then get some prototyping facilities to help um, commercialize the R&D. The U has a very similar concept with Pillar One that's focused on R&D and build, 
connecting existing facilities with pilot lines? Well, there's been talk across the Atlantic about, for example, IMEC and the NSTC under the US CHIPS Act and the, the, the program that I talked about. Maybe they could collaborate on pre-competitive research and fill in um, some of that research um, that nobody, no one company can fund, but together they can pool their resources and fund this research that is five, 10 years out um, that could benefit both continents. Mm -hmm. So related to, to funding, um, I, I mentioned at the outset that, that this is a 17 billion euro investment to build two new factories in, in Magdeburg. And it's part of a overarching strategy by Intel to invest 33 billion euro um, in Europe. Um, one question from one of our viewers is, is why is this so costly? This sounds like a tremendous amount of money. And so, um, Greg, my, my question to you is, is, you know, why is it so expensive? And, and to tell us a little bit about that investment. But then, Sandra, I'd like to bring you into the conversation to hear um, how, you know, it's obviously an investment in Magdeburg and in the region. But what are the costs to you? And has there also been support from the German federal government um, for this initiative as well to try to, to bring a company like Intel to the city? So, so Greg, maybe, maybe first to you, sort of the, the amount of this investment and, and what makes it so expensive? So the technology to make semiconductor manufacturing, semiconductors, the cost of that technology has almost doubled every five years. And right now to build one factory is, so the 17 billion euros is for two factories. So to build one, it's close to 10 billion. And, and some, a third of that is construction. The construction has to be done in such a way that it withstands all kinds of issues. Most of it is in the tools, a fab, or factory has up to 900 tools and dozens and dozens of different types of tools. And some of those tools cost $150 million, euros. It's going to be your, and, and, and the projected cost of them is going to go up to 300 million. And the, and, and, and the reason is an ASML um, if they were on this call could explain it better than I can, but some of the advanced, um, extreme ultraviolet um, equipment is just, it's, it's amazing how complex it is to make these little chips to do the photolithography is just, it's just incredible. And um, that's, that's where most of the cost is, is in these massive, highly complex automated tools that have been in development for years and use extreme ultraviolet light rays to to make these semiconductors and again tr billion transistors on a little chip the size of your fingernail it's just people don't understand how complicated that process is you know your phone an iphone has a lot more computing power today than was used um a, a room full of computers this has more computing power than a room full of computers back in the day when we first sent the man to the moon mm -hmm. Right. It's just it's hard to understand that. Um, but but that that comes at a price. And and the only reason it can be affordable is when you have economies of scale, you're making, you know, millions of iPhones that subsidize the price of a factory. Mm -hmm. And and so, Sandra, talk talk to us a little bit from your perspective about the the costs because there are huge infrastructure costs, some of which are obviously covered with some of the investment, but there have to be other costs to the city and to the region as well. Yes, of course, but you know, infrastructure is the right word for. Um, years ago, a computer, personal computer, was important but not necessary maybe to everyone. Today, chips and semiconductors are a critical infrastructure. You know, my, my coffee machine has a chip. 
my my vacuum cleaner has a chip my car has a chip my telephone has a chip my my computer has a chip everything has a chip but if we don't have semiconductors and chips the world would stand still it's critical infrastructure today and that is important to understand and then it is for me it is necessary to use money to to bring it to give us the the critical infrastructure and yes it is important of course but it's a part of future technology and it is necessary to to bring europe as well as the us the whole world on on the next level and so um maybe it is expensive yes it is and there are subsidies of course and we have costs for infrastructure and for talent marketing and a lot more but you know if we want to go the next step to the future and we need these that critical infrastructure we have to pay for mm -hmm. maybe we don't have to pay for other things but we have to pay for the critical infrastructure and that we have to understand that's not a thing of fun we don't make chips because it's nice it's must have mm -hmm. and it's i mean i think for the city from what i'm i'm hearing you say but i don't want to put words in your mouth this is an important investment in order to take advantage of the opportunity that's being presented yeah. by intel coming to to magdeburg Yes, of course, we have the chance as a city of Magdeburg and as a region of Saxony Anhalt. Now we have a chance to become a part of that future technology. Mm -hmm. That is a big chance for us, and we are really super excited. Other cities maybe that don't have, they don't have, and we are absolutely willing to build that ecosystem around that whole critical infrastructure i told you we have data centers we need data centers for the internet for example we need it for so many things and i'm absolutely sure in in 10 years we need more of them and so we have the best chance for magdeburg for other people also who are coming to magdeburg to be a part of that future and mm -hmm. that is very important to bring the city to the next step to bring the region to the next step into the future. And um, that is the best thing what could happen to us. So, so you've both also talked a little bit about talent um, in the course of our conversation and sort of the need for qualified people to work at Intel, well, A, to do the construction, but B, to work at Intel once the, the um, production facilities are set up. Um, and obviously, this is a, a challenge both for Intel, but also for Magdeburg to ensure that the, the right talent is there. Um, one of our viewers is curious whether there's concern by other technology firms in the region that they might lose qualified talent to Intel, um, but also how um, you and Magdeburg hope to meet the employment needs that the firms in the region have. Um, but then also for you, Greg, sort of what sort of steps are you taking to try to attract and retain the qualified talent that you need? So Sandra, perhaps you first and, and then Greg. Yeah, of course. I, I think um, we expect as a city and as a region, we expect to grow. Simple. We hope and we know people would come to Magdeburg and the region. You have to know, and that was maybe also one of the topics in the whole process. Magdeburg, before the war, 100 years ago, Magdeburg had 340 people living here. Now, it are 240 people who are living here. We are missing 100,000 people. We have space, we have the infrastructure in the city. We just have to build new houses, new apartments, uh, new childcare, and new schools. Of course, we have to do that. But we have the whole infrastructure to grow without becoming bigger as a city. We can fulfill in the, in the city. And uh, that is very important also for the whole project because 
people will come to Magdeburg. And I understand that some companies are afraid that some of their employees are going to Intel. Yes, mm -hmm. maybe. But with the employees who are coming to Intel, come partners, come children. They go to schools, to universities, and they make the city and region bigger. It will grow and there will be more employees than before. Mm -hmm. I think so. And uh, that is a real opportunity for us and the whole region. So I'm, I'm not afraid that uh, people are just, they are leaving the companies and going to Intel. I think that won't be happen. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, so wherever we operate, we partner with universities and local colleges um, and de to develop the talent pool. We, mm -hmm. we, de we help them develop curricula, curricula that apply to our industry and we do training programs and all that kind of stuff. And so that enlarges the talent pool and qualifies it rather than, you know, looking at it as a zero sum game, right? Um, there's plenty of talent, but it's, it's a matter of developing it. And so the commitments that we make help in that regard. So Greg, you had, you had talked um, earlier in our conversation about the fact that sort of access to, I guess, seven universities in the region was one of the factors that helped contribute to um, settling on, on Magdeburg. Um, and obviously these, these higher education institutions are very important, both for the city and region, but also for a company like Intel. Um, is given the role that vocational training and technical training plays in Germany, um, is Intel also thinking about really making investment in some of that local training to make sure that there's the pipeline of talent that's that's needed. Absolutely, absolutely. That's exactly what we do. Okay, so we are really we, glad to hear that. We are really glad to hear that. As we <laughs> as we sort of start to to come to a close, I wanted to to come back to to one topic since this really is um, a, a transatlantic discussion as well. And I think each of you have mentioned that. You know, part of this decision was a way of of strengthening the transatlantic economic relationship um, between Germany and the United States. And of course, given that the the tech, that the US EU Trade and Technology Council just met in Paris, I mean, I think you know, trade and and the economic relationship is front of mind um, for a lot of us. Um, I guess, Sandra, one of the the questions I would have for you is is to what degree do you think that this project might serve as a catalyst for even more economic development from the US in the region? Um, but then also, yeah. I, I think, I hope so. I hope it will. And now it is our step to make contacts, to, to bring the market, the US market, to Germany as well as to Europe and from Europe to the US. It is um, a kind of relationship. We have to come together. We have to find uh, topics we can uh, work together with. And I think my colleague is from the International Bureau. He is, um, he is working with international markets and we have to define and we do so, we did it before too. We have to define that the US market is a very good partner for us. And now we have to find which industry we have connect with Europe and with Magdeburg. But it's for us, I think it's, it's, it's easy to, to find the best way to connect because now we know for Magdeburg and the region, we have the best chance for, for microelectronic, for um, compute technologies, and for semiconductor uh, economics and the whole ecosystem to connect with the US. So um, for us, we have a plan 
and for whole Europe and also for Germany, I think different locations has to think over the different topics because it's not just an ecosystem for Magdeburg and the region of Saxony-Anhalt, also an ecosystem for Germany and uh, for Europe. We have to develop together, for example, with the US. So let me, let me just ask you a quick follow-up question to that because um, obviously this has been an important project for the city of Magdeburg, but Magdeburg is also the capital of the state of Sachsen-Anhalt. And so um, you, know, you represent the city, but I'm curious how much support you've gotten from the state government, but also from the federal government when it comes to this kind of, of development at this scale in your region. Okay, um, a lot. Uh, but what, it was not just a support. We worked together in a whole process. Uh, Greg, you know, it is, it is not a project just of the city of Magdeburg. We have our topics and some topics um, we can work alone as a city, but there are a lot of topics we just can uh, work together with uh, the state of Saxony-Anhalt. There are some people in the different topics we have to find the solutions together with them and Saxony-Anhalt as, uh, as a state is directly connected to, to Berlin, to the, um, to the federal structure, of course. We as a city have no direct connection to Berlin, but about uh, the state of, of Saxony-Anhalt, yes, of course. But we are directly working together and we, are doing, we did it the whole process and we also do it now. And it is necessary to... to to bring the whole pro project to this big success everyone is expecting. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. So, so Greg, I mean, I'd like to come back to the, the kind of transatlantic piece, if you will, because you had, you had said early on in your comments that this you know, investment in Europe is a way of shoring up that transatlantic relationship. Um, obviously, when the, the Trade and Technology Council just met, one of the topics of many topics was how to align um, transatlantic technology policy and, and particularly looking at, at the semiconductor industry. Um, and you touched on this a little bit when you were talking about the CHIPS Acts, but how optimistic are you that, that US and European leaders can work together to align um, policies so that a strong transatlantic semiconductor industry can, can be created and that this sort of investment by Intel is part of that overarching process? I'm actually more hopeful than I've been in a long time. I was involved in the TTIP. I can't remember what that stood for in 2013. Transatlantic Investment, Trade and Investment Partnership. Partnership. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And spent a lot of time suggesting, making recommendations, suggesting language. And I was just so disappointed and never went anywhere. If you look at the TTC outcome from this last time, it's pretty detailed. It's, it's got some real meat. And I think um, semiconductors can be the test bed for, a you know, for the transatlantic renewal of these trans this transatlantic relationship. And I think we have such common challenges um, and the leaders of both regions seem determined to, to address them jointly. And they're already starting to do that. And I, I think I, I see some great things coming. Well, Greg and Sandra, that is a great way to, to bring our conversation to a close, um, because I, I think both of you have, have really shown us a tremendous amount of enthusiasm about something that's a fantastic opportunity and a terrific success story um, already, both for Intel, but also for the region of Magdeburg, the state of Sachsen-Anhalt, uh, and, and for Germany. Obviously, there's a lot of work ahead for both of you. Um, and I, for my part, want to wish you and your colleagues well as you move forward with this. But it is um, a wonderful story of how the economic relationship between Germany and the United States can be further strengthened through this kind of investment um, and in a future-oriented technology. Uh, as both of you have said, this is, this is not uh, nice to have. It's a, a must as technological change, te technology changes. So thank you both for, for sharing your insights um, and for sharing this, this economic development story with us, because I think it's a, a wonderful narrative to follow. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great Thanks. to be here.
Appreciate yeah, and the journey, the journey has still begun. So thank you for having me and have a good time. Well, we since the journey has just begun, we should think about maybe, you know, coming back again in, in when there's an interesting benchmark or something like that. We'd be very happy to to entertain that idea and to to talk with you both again, um, because I do think that there are interest other interesting stories that will come out of this. Um, and and uh, I'm very excited to have had this chance to talk to both of you because I think this is a, a great a great project and a great initiative. Uh, and I I wish you both well. Thank you. Thank you.